Finally today, we have a special One Detroit report on a teacher who uses music to teach students about African American history. Quincy Stewart is a music teacher, band leader, and choir director at Detroit Central High School, but he is also very passionate about students knowing their history. Take a look. I'm famous in room 213. That's the only famous I am is I'm famous in room 213. My name is Quincy Stewart III. I'm 59 years old. And I'm the band director here at Detroit Central High School. I'm a musician. I went to school for music. That's what I love to do. And I perform and play and all that kind of stuff. But funny things happen on the way to what you want to do. And that choir approach. Today is my first hour class. It's a music appreciation class. And I woke up this morning when my mind, that whole church gospel feel, has gone from that to incorporating R&B. This music appreciation class deals with music and history. Now, that's the civil rights, that's kind of the civil rights thing. And you heard this a lot during the civil rights movement choir style songs. It doesn't make sense to teach a music appreciation class and say, okay, this is Coltrane. This is Charlie Parker. This is Duke Ellington. This is Jimi Hendrix. This is the Delphonics. And you don't even know what framed that music. What caused them to write that? What time were they living in when they wrote this? And it explains volumes about why that music exists. So you're hearing more determination here. This is right in 65 with the Edmund Pettus Bridge incident where blacks were beaten by state troopers. For a young black kid to know about the things that occurred in our history that are still happening today, it seems to always be some kind of reticence about that. Anybody ever heard this song before? Never? Listen to the words. I'm a black man first, not a teacher first. And as a black man, knowing our history and knowing what it is that we have to do for these kids to be educated about their history, it's an easy combination for me to put the music and the history together. They work hand in hand. Never heard this before? It's kicking though, ain't it? Oh, you, you mean tell me y'all ain't feeling that? Y'all so far gone that you don't feel that? Since I've taken this class, I've become more aware of how to find certain messages within music. They may say, I'm like a bird, and it means more than just I'm like somebody who flies. It means that I can be free or I can go where I want or my destination isn't far because I have the power to fly. On 12th and Claremont, everybody know what that is? You know what Claremont is, right? Today we're going to be looking at the music of the 60s. But we can't take a look at that unless we take a look at what occurred here in Detroit on July 23rd, 29th, 1967. And you can't say it was a riot because a riot is something aimless without a goal, without anything in mind. What does the word rebel mean? You know, I've had kids walk out and say, Mr. I didn't even know that, man. They should have taught me that. And they feel a sense of gratitude and outrage. And I think both are legitimate. Gratitude that they're getting it outraged that they didn't get it before now. You're in the 12th grade, and you don't know who Marcus Garvey is. Marcus Garvey is a general figure. That's like, but they know who Benjamin Franklin is. They know who Thomas Jefferson is. So let's look at the actors in this scenario. Lyndon B. Johnson was the president. Lyndon Baines Johnson. Let me give you some background on Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson was a Southern, well, he was a Southern white guy. Um, has always been somewhat of a liberal. By 1967, Lyndon B. Johnson had done some pretty good things. He had gotten the 1965 Voting Rights Act passed. He got the 1964 Civil Rights Bill passed. He worked with Dr. King against a lot of Southern resistance, who basically called Lyndon B. Johnson a, a white Uncle Tom. So Lyndon B. Johnson, in his own way, did some things to assist black folks, to be honest with you, he did more than Obama's done, <laughs> which is really interesting, isn't it? Before I had these classes, I didn't know a lot about African-American history. 
Uh, I'm glad that it's now instead of never. We have a soundtrack to our lives. The tune What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. From the time I was 14 years old, the Vietnam War was raging. Of course, the Algiers Motel incident in 1967 with three young black men killed by the police in cold blood. What's going on to me culminated all of that for me. It kind of brought it all together. It's a question, and it's not a rhetorical question. It is a real question being posed by Marvin Gaye. What is going on? And until we get an answer to that question, I think it's a song that's going to last through history.